here we are. Uh, we're back. It's time for Parish Prayers and Beyond, and I'm glad to be here with you. Uh, you know, I hope you know that I do not live here. Uh, I know every time we get together, I, I'm in the church. <laughs> I know some of you understand that. Uh, but for some of you who are a little younger, uh, the preacher doesn't live at the church or in the church, okay? Uh, the church is a place uh, where God is worshipped, His name is praised, uh, and also a place where we do Bible study and learn more about Him through God's Word. Uh, and tonight, that's what I want us to do. I want us to uh, be thinking about something tonight. I, I have a question for you. Does God work all things out for us like we want Him to? Does He work things, everything out like we want Him to? Be thinking about that. Uh, I'm Pastor Craig Beeman, and it's time for Parish Prayers and Beyond. Listen, I want you to listen to this verse. It's a, it's a very well-known verse, and you know it, uh, but I want to read it to you, and we're going to, we're going to look at it together uh, this evening. The Bible tells us from Romans 8, 28, And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. Uh, for those of you who prefer the King James uh, that you grew up with, uh, let us hear it from the King James as well. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Growing up, I used to hear this verse used uh, a lot. And I used to hear, hear it used to imply many times that God would simply make everything better and that everybody would live happily ever after. Uh, you know, someone would just quote that verse and, and that was supposed to be a magical cure and we were all supposed to be happy after that. Um, and, well, I've, I've got some questions that I want to address about this verse. Uh, sometimes there is an implication that we will actually be able to see the good that comes out of the horrible that we've experienced. Sometimes there is an implication that we, in our lifetime, will see the good that God brings out of uh, our horrible situation. And sometimes that's strongly implied. Um, in fact, it, you know, it's still used that way today. Uh, a few questions, though, that must be asked of this verse are, does God work out all things for us like we want him to work them out? I, I mean, does God always work everything out like we want him to work it out? Another question, are we in charge of God? Another question, uh, Will we in our lifetime always see the good that comes out of something horrible that happens to us or something horrible that we experience? These are some good questions to ask. And, you know, I want to encourage you as a reader of the Bible to always ask these questions, not these specific questions, but ask questions about the verse you're reading. Uh, because sometimes we just think we understand it. And we read it and we, we, we put implications or on it or we, uh, we put what we think it means. Let's do some Bible study when we read the Bible. Uh, let's take time to question, not, not question God and his willingness or his, uh, his authority. That's not what I'm talking about. But question what you're reading. What is God saying? Uh, what is he saying through his word? Ask, when was it written? Who, who is it written to? Um, how does it apply to me today? These are some good questions to ask about any verse that you ever read in God's word. But I want you to, re to ask questions about what you're reading. Uh, you need to learn from the word of God. I need to learn from the word of God. So we need to learn and simply reading it, sometimes we, don't, we do not understand, we do not get what God wants us to get out of it. So some questions. Uh, but first, let's look a little closer at this uh, verse uh, that we shared earlier. First, we, th we see things, uh, that, that things are working together for good, 
but it's for those who love God. The, the, the working together for good is for those who love God. Uh, there's a restriction as to re who receives all things working together for good. There's a restriction upon those who receive that. Uh, it's not for everyone. God doesn't work everything out for good for everyone. Uh, so we can't just take this verse and throw it out to unbelievers and say, look, God's going to work something good out of it. I, for unbelievers, that's not true. This is for those who love God. This is important for us uh, because if there's someone in a time of trouble, an unbeliever, we don't need to tell them this. Oh, well, something good's going to come out of it. Well, they don't understand that. They don't understand that at all. That makes no sense to them. Right now, they're suffering. They're in pain, and they can't see any good, and, not, and they may never see any if they are, are not a believer. They've got to be one who loves God, who walks with God. We need to know that all things working together for good is for those who love God, those who are called according to His purpose, those who are walking with Him, those who are continually leaning on His strength, those who are uh, respecting His changeless law, those who rest in His grace, those who have accepted His salvation. That's for whom this working things out together for good is for. That's who this is for. This is for those who believe in God, these who are, those who are walking with Him. Uh, so be careful how you use this verse. Uh, I, I'm not warning you, I'm telling you and encouraging you to be careful uh, because God's Word is not something we just throw around at random. Uh, this verse is for those who believe, those who are called according to his purpose to his purpose uh, those are these are this is for those who love God so let's keep that in mind uh, God is not promising to work things out for good to those who are not called according to his purpose the, he is not promising just to simply work everything out for everybody all the time for good that's not what this verse says so let's let's move to our first question that I asked earlier does God work all things out for us like we want Him to? I think you, you, you know the answer to that. Uh, it's no. The Bible does not say that. It does not say that God will take what is bad and make, something, make it into something you like. It's, God is not saying that He's going to take a horrible situation and then make it something you like. Look, it does not say that God will work things out like we want them to work out. And that's something we need to remember. Now, I, to me, that is annoying. I would rather God work something out in the way I want Him to work it out. I would love for Him to do things the way I think He ought to do them. Uh, but there's a problem with that. I mean, that almost answers the next question that I had is, are we in charge of God? No, we're not. We have to remember that the good of God may not always look like good we call good. But it is good because God has called it good. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Um, we must remember that God is God and we are not. He is in charge. He will work things out for good. But it's his definition of good that, that we're looking at here. It's not our definition of good. Our definition of good may be something totally different than what God has for us. And so we've got to respect God for who he is. And we've got to also trust him that the good he's going to work out from the horrible situation that we've been through or experienced is, in fact, good. It is good because God has called it good. The key to all of this is to know that whatever he works out, um, that whatever he works out, however he takes all things and works them together for good, it is in itself good. We may not like it, but it's still good. 
Well, think about the prodigal son. Think about the prodigal son. Think about that boy who wanted his inheritance or inheritance early. Hey, Daddy, give me my inheritance. Now, for him, he thought the good for him that was about to be worked, hey, was going to be really good. You know, he, he, he didn't like, the, evidently, what was going on in his life and felt that he just needed to leave and take his inheritance early. Before his dad even died, he wanted his inheritance. He thought the good that was going to come out of the situation he was in was going to be that he had money and he could go spend it. Well, he thought that would, be, that would just be really good until he wound up looking at pig slop thinking that that might taste good. Found himself in a spot that he didn't like, hungry, feeling very low, deciding that that pig slop, that looks good, realizing then, oh my goodness. And ultimately, ultimately for the prodigal son, the ultimate good, the good from God was that he was able to go back to his family and that his father received him gladly and celebrated his arrival and brought him back into the family. That was the ultimate good that God had for this boy. But in his mind, well, I don't like where I am. You know, I want to go out and seek my fortune. I want to go with the money. I want my money now. It's my money. I don't want it now. <laughs> and he wanted to go out into the world. Well, that was what he thought good was. But God's good was, no, wait a minute. God's good was that you have a father who loves you, and you need to see that. You have a father who will forgive you, and you need to see that. And that's what was good for the prodigal son. So sometimes we think we know what is good and, for, and the good that needs to come out of the bad that we've experienced. And we certainly have an idea of what we think God ought to do, but no. God knows what's good and he will work things out for good. So we must remember that. The last question I mentioned was, will we in our lifetime always see the good that God works out of a horrible situation? Will we always see that? Uh, you know, I, a lot of people use this verse to give comfort, and it does bring comfort to know that some good will come out of something that's bad. I mean, that is good, and that does bring comfort to know that. And it is good uh, for us to use this verse for those who believe in God, for those who follow God, for those who have accepted his salvation, it is good for us to use this verse in that way because it does bring us comfort. But sometimes people hear this verse and what do they do? They start immediately looking for the good that God's going to bring out of the horrible situation. Now, please do not mishear me. I'm not saying you should not look. I'm not saying that. Shake your head. Brother Craig is not saying that you should not look for the good that God could bring from the bad situation. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that some people will continue to look the rest of their lives looking for that good and sometimes to the point where they will make up something. They will say, well, this is the good. They'll find it because they want an answer. They want an answer. Now, sometimes we do immediately see the good that God works out of a bad situation. Sometimes we do. Sometimes it's delayed. Sometimes it is delayed. It may not be immediately obvious to us that God is doing something good out of this horrible situation. Uh, we, you know, it may not be immediately evident. And the hard truth is sometimes we may never see the good that God makes or does out of the difficult situation that we went through. You know, we, we can't always explain why we experience some situations, why we have to go through bad times, why we're going through this blasted virus. We can't explain it. Some people would love to explain it. Some people go to great lengths to explain it. Well, it was created in a laboratory, and it was sent over here, and all the, you know, oh, the big conspiracy, they're all out to get us. Oh, it was all the Democrats' fault. Oh, we want to point a finger. You know, sometimes we do not know why things are allowed to happen to us, and we just have to realize that that is a fact. And what good is God going to bring out of this virus? I don't know. 
I, I want to say that I have seen some good come out of this. I want to believe that some of us have drawn closer to the Lord during all of this. I want to believe that some of us have read our Bible more than we have in the past. I want to believe that many of us have talked to God more than we have in the past because of this. And I would like to point at some of those things and say, yes, those are some good things that are coming out of this. That God is using, God is doing, He's taking some of this the, the, you know, he's taking this bad situation and he's doing some good through it. And I think, you, I think those are valid truths. I think those are valid, uh, you know, pieces of good that God is doing in all of this. But still, why did he allow it? Why did, I don't know. I don't know. What other good is he going to do? Are we going to ever you know, see all of it? My point is, we may not always see what God is doing the good that he's going to do through some bad situations while we're alive on this earth. And that's okay. It's okay. Why? Because we believe in a God who is bigger than everything. We believe in a God who cares about us. We believe in a God who will do as he says, and he will work things out for good. Even if we do not see the good in our lifetime on this earth. We've got to trust in a God who's bigger than us. We've got to trust in a God who, who cares about us, even when we do not always see the good that comes out of the bad. Will you do that? Will you trust in a God who's bigger than you? Will you trust in a God who knows more than you do, more than me? Will you trust in him? Will you lean on him? Because the Bible tells us Bible tells us, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purposes. To his purpose. Let me say that right. So you don't think, oh, well, he misquoted. <laughs> Look, I love you. We're going to make it through this. We're going to see, you know, ultimately when we get into heaven, the good that God worked during all of this mess. We're going to see it. And you're going to be able to ultimately, when you get to heaven, see why some of the bad garbage that you had to go through down here on earth, you're, you're going to see the good that came out of it. You're going to see the good that came out of it. And in reality, I don't think we're going to care once we get up there. Hey, I made a rhyme. <laughs> I don't think we're going to care once we get up there. We're going to be in the presence of God himself. And nothing else is really going to matter. Your test scores, not going to matter. Did you fail the first time you took your driver's test? Not going to matter. Did you not do well on the ACT? Not going to matter. Did you, did, you, did, you, did you just blow that essay that you had in that class? Not going to matter. None of that's going to matter when we get to be in the presence of God. Boy, it just gets me excited thinking about it. <laughs> but I, our time here is through tonight. And uh, I, I, let's have a word of prayer. Uh, let's thank God for being who he is. Can we do that? Let's do that. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for being who you are. God, I thank you for loving us. I thank you for working things out for good. Your word says for good. It does not say for our good, but for good. Uh, so we look and see that you're going to work some good out of these weird, bad situations we experience. Uh, and so we trust you, Father. We trust your word. We, we believe that what you say is true, and we believe that you will do that. And Father, we thank you for being a God who cares for us, a God who walks with us, a God who is with us at all times. And Lord, tonight we want to pray for... Uh, the Hassel family in the loss of Lefty. God, it's hard. It's always hard to lose one that is close to us. And Father, that's the reason it's hard. It's because we're close to them. That, that's what makes it hard, with the love we have for them. Uh, I think Queen Elizabeth once said that grief is the price we pay for love. And God, she was right. I mean, it's tough. But Father, we know that in your goodness, in your great love, and in your great care and comfort, you're going to be with this family. You're going to walk with the Hassel family day by day, and you're going to give them the strength they need. God, I thank you for that. Lord, I thank you for also walking with 
uh, our church because he is our brother in Christ and we hurt as well and we experience the pain of loss as well. And so, Lord, we ask that you continue to bring us all comfort during this time of loss. Father, we ask again that you would make this virus go away. Lord, that you would give wisdom to our leaders. Lord, wisdom to our friends who are trying to figure all of this out. Father, help them to look to you. Help them to uh, look to your wisdom in all of this, to back up and to look at the big picture and to realize that you are in charge. Father, help us all to see that. God, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And of course, I always leave you with something a little funny at the end, and I feel like I, I'm kind of obligated to do that. I want you to know uh, that we laugh. We have a good time here at this church, and I know you know that. Uh, some of you who are watching who've never been here, uh, this kind of is just a little taste uh, that we do have a great time here. Uh, let me ask you the question. How did the barber, how did the barber win the bike race? You don't know? He took a shortcut. A short cut. I know, I know, it's just sad, isn't it? <laughs> but listen, <coughs> pardon me. And, I, and that's, the, that's the thing I've heard. If you ever cough, you always have to follow up by, I don't have the Rona. I mean, that's what I was told. So anytime anybody coughs, that's, you know, that's what they're doing. So I'm telling you, I don't have the Rona, uh, as far as I know. Well, we're being careful. Remember, look, join us at the First Baptist Church Sunday. Remember, you, wear your mask. Uh, if you don't want to wear your mask, we have a section you can sit with others who feel the same as you. Uh, but we are, do, we are doing the social distancing at our church, so you do not need to feel like, oh, my goodness, uh, everybody's just all bundled up together. No, we're not doing that. Uh, we're trying to be safe at the First Baptist Church, and we want you to worship with us. And so we'll, we will be looking for you this Sunday. If not, of course, as always, you can catch us on the, on the radio. Uh, that's 95.9 KMAR at uh, 11 o'clock. Uh, now, look, if, if, the, if the service does not start straight up at 11, keep listening because we will, you will hear the broadcast, okay, uh, to, on KMAR at 11 o'clock or a little after, all right? So stick with KMAR and you will hear it. Uh, as always, you can say, uh, if you have an Alexa device, Alexa, play first words. You'll be able to hear the sermon that way, uh, and, and that that'll be fine for you there. Uh, you can also, let's see, you can also go to YouTube uh, on Monday mornings and you can see the entire broadcast of the worship service. Uh, uh, and how do you get to YouTube? Okay, go to FBC Winsboro, fbcwinsboro.com. And there'll be a link on the right-hand side. Don't click on the little red button that says listen here or live service. Don't listen to that. Don't look at that. <laughs> but on the right-hand side, the big letters, it says you can click here. Here's the link. Click on that, and you'll be able on Monday to hear the previous Sunday's uh, service. You can do it right now today, and you'll get this last Sunday service. Uh, so uh, I think. Just try it out and see. All right. <laughs> remember, I want you to always remember, never forget, you matter to God and to us here at the First Baptist Church of Winsboro.